India has witnessed a dramatic transformation in its defense sector over the past decade under Prime Minister Narendra Modi's leadership. The finance minister recently noted that defense exports surged by over 1,100 percent from Rs 1,941 crore in 2014 to Rs 23,662 crore in 2024, with military hardware now reaching over 100 countries. The government allocated 75 percent of the 2025 to 26 defense capital budget to domestic production and added 5,000 plus items to its indigenization list. Defense production rose from Rs 43,000 crore to Rs 1.46 lakh crore, including Rs 32,000 crore from the private sector. Indigenous technology was credited for the success of Operation Sindor, targeting terrorist bases in Pakistan. India's proactive foreign policy also included evacuating citizens from Ukraine and Sudan and supplying 30 crore COVID-19 vaccine doses globally. India is set to begin procuring 97 upgraded Tejas MK-1A fighter jets from Hindustan Aeronautics Limited in financial year 2026 to 27 under a rupees 67,000 crore plan. This follows the 2021 order of 83 jets and marks a major step in boosting self-reliance in defense. The upgraded jets now feature 60% indigenous components with key systems like radar and radios made by Bharat Electronics Limited. The per unit cost has risen to Rs 600 crore, partly due to forex fluctuations and reliance on US supplied GF404 engines, with deliveries beginning by late 2025. HAL aims to produce 24 aircraft annually across expanded facilities. Designed to replace aging IF fleets, the Advanced Tejas promises improved avionics, radar, and weapon capabilities, strengthening air power and supporting India's long term defense manufacturing goals. A senior Indian Air Force official has downplayed the strategic threat posed by Pakistan's potential acquisition of Chinese-made J-35A stealth jets. Citing operational constraints and likely limited fleet size, the official noted that such additions would not enable Pakistan to achieve air superiority or carry out deep strikes into Indian territory. Comparisons were drawn to the earlier induction of J-10C jets, which failed to outperform IF aircraft due to India's superior tactics and electronic warfare systems. Emphasizing India's robust air defense, featuring Rafale Su-30 MKI fighters S-400 and Akash missile systems, the official asserted that India's layered defenses and pilot training ensure a decisive edge. The IF continues to modernize, focusing on the indigenous AMCA stealth fighter program to secure long-term regional air dominance. India is enhancing its air surveillance with the development of the Netra MK-1A, a next-gen airborne early warning and control system led by DRDO's Center for Airborne Systems. The initiative aims to address regional threats, particularly Pakistan's possible induction of China's stealth J-35A fighter jets. The MK-1A will significantly upgrade India's current capabilities with gallium nitride-based ASA radar for improved detection of low-radar cross-section aircraft. Advanced AI-driven signal processing will enable accurate tracking in real-time. Building on the Netra MK-1, introduced in 2017, the new system will feature expanded range, upgraded electronics and seamless integration into India's air defense network. The project aligns with India's strategy to boost indigenous defense technologies and secure a tactical edge in modern aerial warfare. Amid rising tensions with Azerbaijan, Armenia is reportedly considering purchasing Indian-made Su-30 MKI fighter jets, possibly armed with BrahMos and Astra missiles, to counter Azerbaijan's new JF-17 Block III fleet from Pakistan. This follows a $250 million defense deal with India in 2022 and reflects Armenia's shift towards strategic military ties with New Delhi, particularly after the 2020 Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. Analysts highlighted the Su-30 MKI's cost-effectiveness and advanced Indian avionics compared to pricier alternatives like the Rafale. Armenia also seeks to upgrade its current Su-30 SMs 
with Indian systems, partly due to Russia's failure to deliver additional jets amid sanctions. A potential deal would mark India's first Su-30 MKI export, enhancing Armenia's air power and reducing dependence on Russian arms while boosting India's defense export footprint. The Indian Air Force is evaluating two advanced Israeli missile systems, Israel Aerospace's Wind Demon and Rafael's Icebreaker, to enhance its long-range precision strike capabilities. This move follows the successful use of the Rampage missile, which demonstrated high accuracy and effectiveness against protected targets. The Wind Demon offers real-time operator control, with electro-optical guidance and adaptable warheads, ideal for mobile or time-sensitive targets. Meanwhile, the Icebreaker provides autonomous targeting, stealth design and GPS jamming resistance, making it suited for pre-planned strikes in heavily defended zones. Both systems can be launched from multiple platforms, increasing operational flexibility. These evaluations are part of the IF's broader modernization efforts, aimed at maintaining regional air superiority and strengthening India's deep strike deterrence posture. China, once a global export powerhouse, is now facing serious economic distress, slowing exports, dangerous deflation, and overcapacity. In May 2025, China's exports grew only 4.8%, with a sharp 35% fall in shipments to the U.S. Despite stimulus efforts, consumer and industrial demand remains weak. In contrast, India's consumption-driven economy is stable, with inflation around 4% and RBI policies boosting growth. India recorded $821 billion in exports in financial year 2024-25 and is targeting $1 trillion by 2030. With global companies shifting to a China plus one strategy, India is emerging as a trusted alternative for manufacturing and exports. If India enhances ease of doing business and expands manufacturing infrastructure, the 2025-2030 decade could be transformative turning China's crisis into India's defining opportunity. In a major step toward defense self-reliance, India's DRDO has developed an Indigenous Electronic Countermeasures Pod ECM for the Indian Air Force's Su-30 MKI fighter jets. Designed by the Defense Avionics Research Establishment, there, in Bengaluru, the new system will replace the heavier Russian-made SAP-518 jammer pods, improving the aircraft's agility and performance. Tailored specifically for wingtip deployment, the lighter pods are integrated symmetrically to maintain aerodynamic balance. The ECM pod features state-of-the-art technologies such as an active phased array for targeted jamming and a wideband digital radio frequency memory system. The DRFM enables the aircraft to capture enemy radar signals and return deceptive data, effectively creating false targets. This capability enhances the aircraft's survivability against advanced air-to-air -air missiles like the AIM-120C-5 AMROM and PL-5E. This development is part of the broader Super Sukhoi upgrade program, aimed at modernizing the IAF's frontline fleet. The program also includes the integration of the new Virupaksh ASA radar, Druti radar warning receiver, and dual-color missile warning systems. Collectively, these upgrades are expected to ensure the Su-30 MKI remains a potent force against evolving aerial and surface-based threats in future conflicts. Japan has officially offered its IHI XF91 engine to India for co-development and domestic production, positioning itself as a strong contender to power India's upcoming advanced medium combat aircraft, AMCA. With this move, Japan joins the US, UK and France in competing to supply the engine for the fifth-generation stealth fighter. Developed by IHI Corporation, the XF91 produces a dry thrust of around 107 kN and up to 147 kN with afterburner, with future scalability, to nearly 196 kN, aligning with India's evolving defense needs. India's gas turbine research establishment, GTRE, 
Overseeing the AMCA engine project requires a power plant capable of at least 120 kN thrust, including supercruise capabilities, sustained supersonic flight, without afterburner. The XF91 exceeds the current dry thrust requirement of 73 to 75 kN and can be adjusted to fit AMCA's immediate and future performance targets. The Japanese offer emphasizes technology transfer and local manufacturing, supporting India's make in India and self-reliance goals. The proposal is under evaluation, alongside competing bids from France's Safran, UK's Eurojet, and GE from United States. The final selection will hinge on technical performance, cost, technology sharing terms, and strategic alignment, with the Japanese entry highlighting the AMCA program's growing global significance. In a major shift in defense policy, India's Ministry of Defense has opened production of the AMCA to private sector competition. Traditionally led by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, the fifth-generation stealth fighter program will now see firms like Larsen and Tubro and Tata Advanced Systems Limited eligible to bid for the project. The decision approved by Defense Minister Rajnath Singh on May 27, 2025, follows delays in house existing commitments including the overdue Tejas MK-1A deliveries. This policy aims to expand production capacity, reduce delays, and ensure timely delivery to the Indian Air Force, which urgently needs to replenish its fighter fleet. Designed by the Aeronautical Development Agency, ADA, the AMCA is central to India's Atmanirbhar Bharat initiative, with plans for 126 aircraft and production beginning around 2035. It will feature supercruise capability, AI-driven avionics, and stealth technologies. The program's first prototype is targeted for 2031, with induction expected by 2034. Private sector involvement, either independently or in joint ventures, aims to bring efficiency and innovation to the project. A joint venture model with HAL, retaining a majority stake is being considered, though experts argue private leadership may be essential for avoiding past bottlenecks and achieving strategic goals. That's all from YKS team for now. Hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.